Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're grateful, thankful, privileged, and honor for those that have connected with us in every way. And God, I'm just, again, grateful. I send extended prayers to Rust and his family. God, I also extend prayers to the Visitors Chapel family and the death of their pastor, Reverend Jack Field, Sr. God, I just lift that whole family, Carol, and everybody up in that regard. And God, I also pray for the life that Robert lived as well, that it be an example to him and his family. And God, I just lift your life up. God, because we realize that even though things die, it causes something else to live. And God, that we will live out the legacies of those that may have gone before us, just like we live out that legacy of yours every day of our lives. And so God, do let the words that will come from my mouth, the motives of my heart be acceptable unto you, for you are my strength and my redeemer. God, thank you for every listening ear, God, that will hear and let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to them today. And God, I'm hopefully, hopeful, hopeful, and I'm hopeful and hopefully that, God, something will be said today that will check and challenge, convict us to change us in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we're grateful and thankful for your word today. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new, your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, would you shout amen? amen. Come on, give God one of those big praises you got right there, right there, right there. Thank you, guys. Amen. Oh, real loud and proud, let me see them what? Amen. I'm going to draw fire, go higher, then retire. Hey, give me uh, 20 good ones on the clock today. Can you give me that? Amen. Just so I can keep time, just give me 20. And I'm going to try to get it in. Uh, I do have some other engagements uh, after um, today, so I'm going to try to get as much as I can in with you all, um, and so we can meet those other timelines as well. If you have a um, person next to you that don't have a bomb, I say, get one for that man in that nice hat over there. <laughs> He's ushering the day over there, amen. And the other nice hat. Well, y'all, y'all, be, y'all be sharp around here, boy. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. I have a, I, I'll tell you, I have the best church in the world, y'all. Give it up for our ushers, y'all, that they go to their seats today. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. They say it's cold in the kids' area. Tell them to shout a little more. (laughs) Amen. Pastor Jason can control all of that for them. Uh, He got full control over there. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Yeah, he does. All right. Us just going to take a seat right there. All right, I want to continue. This is week number nine. Somebody shot nine. Man, we've been talking about this particular subject for a few weeks now, and hopefully I can spend a few moments and get through this one, uh, and I'm going to jump right out in there in that moment right now. And so I want to teach continually from this series, Walk. Somebody shout, The Walk. And so I've been walking this thing out. We've been walking this journey together. Um, last week, I kind of ended off about, you know, at least find someone that is going the direction that you're trying to get to. You know, if you haven't learned how to do it the way you feel you should be doing it yet, at least get to someone around someone that you are having to catch up to versus someone you may have to carry. A lot of times we hang around more of those that we got to carry versus trying to get around those we got to catch up to. You may not be there yet, but keep on striving. You're going to get there. Amen. I, I promise you that person that may be where you want to be will adjust their pace for you if they see you trying to get to where God wants you to be. But I, I, I'm telling you today, just go on and cut off those that you're carrying right now. Just cut them off. Tell them, just text them right now while you're in church. Say, I know what? I'm not going to hang out with you no more. God, I feel like I'm carrying you. Amen. And you, we ain't walking the same walk. You know, I'm tired of getting around you. And every time you, I'm around you, you telling me something bad about somebody. I want to hear more gospel than any gossip at all. I need to hear the word of the Lord. I need to hear that in my life. And so I want to talk about this thing. And so I've been teaching for three weeks now um, um, and on, from the subject, walk in love. Somebody shout walk in love. And, and let me tell y'all something, though. Every word that has been studied have been put to the test. Every time I read this, anybody ever been reading the Bible and you see something that applies to your life and you try to skip over it? 
You're like, oh, I can't read that right now. I, I'm dealing with that. God said, I need you to deal with that then. Amen. I know how we get. You know, we're like, man, I, 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 I got a, that's a problem area of mine. And so we be reading about it, and God will make it jump right at you, and you act like you didn't see it. You're like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna flip the page. I'm going to flip the page. Because anyone want to keep you stuck on stupid. And he know that we perish or we fail for the lack of understanding or knowledge. And so he'll make you, he'll, God will show it to you, and the enemy will make you feel like you don't need to hear it right now because you may want to stay there. Some of us want to stay mad. Some of us want to stay upset. We like seeing other folks get what they deserve from us. But God has required us as Christians to walk in love. And this changes the perspective because a few weeks ago I told you that the love walk is lonely. Sometimes you may be the only person on your job and in your relationship doing it. You may be the only person applying the love. I told you I don't have a love language. Love is my language. I try to speak it every chance. And I'm learning because, you know, I used to have a bad temper. I'm from the streets, y'all, you know, so I used to have a little hot temper. And so God had to do some work in my life, but I had to put in the work too to start putting into practice those things that I've learned because when you know better, you what? Amen. So God is trying to get understanding and knowledge because when you understand something, it's simply divine comprehension in your heart that gives you the ability and the capability to repeat something on command. That means when I understand something, I can command something. I can put, I can check myself when I understand what I just read, when I understand what I'm supposed to do as a believer. And now, and gaining that understanding, our goal during this walk series has been to build us and to cause more spiritual maturity to be in our life. I like talking to the saints. You know, I, I, I hear the sinners, and maybe a sinner or those that want to see Christ is in this room, but our goal is to show them the way. In other words, there are certain characteristics that we as believers are to exemplify. When the worship comes on, when you know God has been good, nobody's going to have to prompt you. You're going to lift your hand, and that person that may not know what that looked like may just be following suit because they may be the only one that does not have their hand up. And so they're going to what? copy you because holistic praise and worship, or our even mission of our ministry, is always through our actions to cause maybe even those that may not believe to evaluate eventually investigate the faith. Let me see what's going on. How, do they, how do, are they able to still respond that way when what just happened in their life should, should cause a different response? And so spiritual maturity is my goal. Every day to grow the believer in a more mature way. Because when the more we grow maturely, the less mistakes we make. The less we miss the mark. The less we miss the opportunity and not maximize moments. When we become mature, we begin to take advantage of every opportunity and maximize it because maturity, spiritual maturity is an ongoing process that requires us to surrender and remain obedient to God. That's how we're going to grow maturely in our walk with God. Now, I'm going to give a few references as it relates to recapping, and I talked about from uh, Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to bring it up. You can write it down for your reference. I'm not going to read the whole text today, but I want to recap so you can get into your mind where I'm at. And so in that scripture, it was talking about that we should be imitators of God. That, that it says, therefore, brethren, be imitators of God as their children. That means that children are natural imitators. And then it says, walk in the ways of love, just as Christ loved you. And has, like your love should be a sweet aroma or a nice smelling fragrance, fragrance unto God. And so it brings us to that because everything that we do, it should bring forth an aroma of what God is in our life. And so I want to reiterate that because this walk, love walk, is so important in showing the world what God looks like. During these last three days of fasting this week, when we were in fasting, uh, we were talking about authority. I learned so much about just me as a person and the capabilities I have of commanding the earth to respond to my voice. Anybody been putting that thing into practice over your life? Start commanding stuff because you say, God, I got delegated authority, distributed power to command those things. And so anybody start speaking to yourself? 
Amen. Commanding yourself to turn, act right. Amen. I mean, sometimes you may, you may make a mistake at that moment, but you ain't got to stay there. Amen. You may get off track, but you ain't got to keep on walking in the dirt. Amen. Get back on the road quickly. Anybody find yourself getting back on the road real quick? Amen. I don't know about you, but I, be, I mean, I get off track. I, I, amen. For a moment, I'll be like, hold on, God. I just learned something. And I, get, I, I said, no, I ain't going to stay here. I ain't waiting for nobody else to get right. I'm on my path. Because this word will convict you, y'all. I'm saying, if it really working in your life, if it, if it ain't done nothing for nobody else, man, I pray for you. You, you, hey, Jesus Christ. And so last week I left y'all with the subject or just the point to let love, love will lead you. Somebody shout, love will lead me. Love will be your motivator. It, love will be your direct. It'll be your compass for compassion. It will be your leading guide to everything God has for you to do. And I gave you this scripture in John 13. And I want to bring emphasis back on that. Man, my time, I, that, that's a lot. Y'all must have got the clock on fast. <laughs> I think it's sped up like it's sped up. Time moving forward on me. I done went back the other time. John 13, y'all there? Verse 34, 35, I want to draw emphasis on this new command. Now, as I was looking at this thing this week, and hopefully for the uh, point, of, I'm going to teach this. I got a lot to say, and I'm going to say it in a short amount of time, but I wanted you to hear some things that will guide you and govern your life. We need some God-governing systems to keep us in alignment with God even when we get off track. And so here it says a new command. Somebody shout, a new command. A new command. He says a new command I give you. Now, the reason why God is saying this because he shared a lot in this chapter, Right? And so he was talking to the disciples. He had just washed their feet, and he was doing some other things, and he wanted to make sure they understood that here is a point of reiteration. God has, at times, have to reiterate things in our life. He has to reestablish some things because sometimes when we get around God or get around others or not been around God, we can sometimes get a little, little complacent and forget about all that God. You ever met that person that got saved when they, um, when God saved them from a life of sin and they done been saved a long time and then now they think they too good for everybody else and like they ain't never done nothing and be talking about everybody else and know that they were probably 10 times worse. Amen. See what happened is that sometimes God has to remind you by giving you a new command. It's not like he rewrote it. He is, he, at this moment, he's reestablishing it because he knew he was about to depart soon. He says, I need for you to establish in your life the love. I knew you knew love or what it was before you met me, but now you're in my presence. He was establishing something here. He said, now you've gotten to walk with me. For the last few years, you stood beside me. And now I got to give you a new commandment. I don't need you to love like you once loved. I don't need you to love the way your mama showed you how to love. He said, I need to establish or reestablish something new in your life right now. I need you to have the same concept of loving, but I want to reestablish this love in you. Look what he said. He says, a new commandment I give you. Love one another, look at this, as I have loved you. So you must love one another. This is the only point. Y'all see what I'm talking about today? Because we don't love and learn, we don't learn love from other people. You know, we don't learn love, we watch love. It, most, if you grew up in a good home or if you grew up in an abusive home or you grew up in some type of environment, most of us are products of our environment. But that's that, that's that point in your life you have to get where you develop a relationship with Jesus and then now you understand what love really looks like. And so what happened is that that old love you once had or the way you grew up loving or maybe how love was exhibited to you, you'll learn how to have a new type of love and that's why you Say, I'm gonna reestablish this love. Somebody shout, reestablish me. 
Oh, I'm about to flip the script on some of y'all today because y'all love got to be revitalized, rekindled, and reannounced in your life. Sometimes you say, man, I know I've I, I done some things and you've done some things to me, but I'm about to love you from a new perspective. I'm about to exemplify love towards you like I've never done before. Yeah, it may be foreign, it may seem new to you, but what it is is that it's coming directly from a place where I've learned to experience the love of God. And once I experience the love of God, when God shows you his love, man, and you'll start to give it away. And folks are like, wait, what you doing? They say, man, I got a new love. I got a new love. I'm searching. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Y'all about to hit me. Y'all about to hit me. I'm searching for a new love. Somebody out there, I'm searching for a new love. Don't sing it. Just say it. I'm looking for a new love. All right. So he says this. He says, but this, by this, verse 35, he says, by this, everyone. This is what messed me up last week, y'all. He ain't saying just those around you. He said, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. And God is so good to us, y'all, because he's trying to control our attitude, our ambitions, our, our, our life, our mindsets. And so my question today is, how do we reap this love? How do we make love a dominating factor of our life and not a diminishing one? One that grows, one that gets better, one that gets a little greater every single day. Because what you don't put action to will end up diminishing in your life. It won't develop and grow to get greater if you don't put some action, you don't walk this thing out. And so I love this because what does it mean to love one another? Somebody say, I'm glad I asked that question today. I ain't saying that. Somebody say, I'm glad I asked that question today. <laughs> All right. It's called call and response. Y'all been in church for a little while. Some, sometimes you may miss it because you're just listening real good. Can I just grab my iPad real quick? All right. And so... I can get in your face. Sometimes I got to get down on you then. Get down on you. All right. Um, it says, what does it mean to love one another? What does it mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean to love one another as Christ has loved you? The one another in this verse is now, I'm about to become a little biased. And this is a very intimate spiritual maturing moment. So I need y'all to hear this the way I'm shouting it today. It's important because Jesus gets a little particular here. He gets a little more intimate because he's he giving instructions to his house. And so he's telling his disciples, he says, love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say, I need y'all to love everybody like you saw me love others. He says something very particular that creates a ownership of all of us that it requires us to love totally differently than we ever loved before. Check this out, y'all, because the one another in these verses refers to us as fellow believers. Ooh, Jesus. Because this is where it gets a little crazy. Because we are more concerned about things in life because he says it's a distinguishing mark of being in Jesus Christ. It's a mark that's put on us. And I know everybody worried about every other mark in the world except for the one that identifies us as Christians. I'm talking about a maturing moment, y'all. We're about to renegotiate this walk we've been on. This particular verse challenged us as Christians. It, check is, it checks us as well. It checks us in our very core. It said to you, us, if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, here are some identifying qualities that should separate you from the rest of everybody. It should put you all, us all, in a category of our own. That's why I'm telling you, I got to get a little personal, a little biased because I know we can talk about loving everybody else, but he talked about something in this moment because I shared a few weeks ago that, yes, if I love those that love me back, even the world does that, that's easy to do. 
But God is speaking to us in this moment right here. He's saying that this love is a deep, sincere love for each other, brothers and sisters in Christ. Because God reminds us, I'm going to bring up another scripture real quick in 1 John. You can write it down. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 21, for the, folk, for the sake of teaching, he says it like this. It's a connection from John 13. Here the 1 John chapter 4, verse 21, he says, and he has given us this command. Anyone, so John is going in our, into our future, bringing us back to verse top, the 13 of John. He's now in 1 John. This is after John, right? And now he's in, in, in the other epistles. These are the synoptic gospels. 1 John is in the epistles. And now he's coming back in 1 John chapter 4, verse 21. He says, he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their what? Sisters, this is a command Jesus did to shock the entire world. This was a shock that separated us from everybody else. He created a group that's identified by one thing. Now, I'm sharing this for a reason, y'all. He did this in the Bible. He shared this. I need y'all to walk this thing out with me today. He did this to identify a crowd, a group that's only identified by one thing. Somebody shout one thing. And that one thing is love. Can you shout love? love. Why? Because there are so many groups in the world that identifies themselves by skin color, by race, culture, and creed, by their uniform, by their interests, whether or not they have tattoos or piercings, whether or not they eat meat or whether or not they don't, whether or not they do this or that. The ways that people identify themselves around the world are endless, the way people identify themselves. But the church, somebody shout the church. See, the church is unlike anything else. It doesn't matter what skin color you are. It doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter your dialect or your diet. What matters the most that identify us, cross barriers, creed, or culture, is our love for one another. That's why we can get into this room and show each other love and not look at some race and try to figure out whether or not you eat this or you do that or you eat shrimp or whether or not you eat grits. I don't know what you do, but what I identify you as today is whether or not you love God. And if you love God, the Bible says you'll love your brothers and sisters. And the reason why God is sharing this, I got to tell you this because the followers of Jesus are identified by their love for one another because when we treat Sometimes we can treat a stranger better than we treat our own. Amen to that, somebody. You know, first time guests walk in our church, we be like, hey, how you doing? And a church disciple walk like, what's up? Amen. They don't even exist. I like to have first time guests, but I'm going to treat my family good too. Amen. We wait on somebody new in your life. Sometimes you, oh, I, I, I wait on a new person. I say, man, the new person, I love you. I receive you. But I hope that my family know I love you because you could be here today and go on tomorrow. Amen, Amen to that, somebody. Amen. You can't even come in. Oh, that's the first time. And let me see. We'll treat straight. And y'all know folks like that. They'll treat somebody that they ain't never met before better than those in their own house. Amen. But it then speaks volume of who they really are. Your family said, man, that joke, look at him. <laughs> and now everybody don't know that you love. The stranger think you love them, but you don't care nothing about them. You were trying to impress people that ain't going to have your back behind your back. Amen. See, he's trying to teach us how to love those that's intimate with us, around us. He says, we as the body of Christ. That's why I tell you, I'm a little biased this morning concerning, because Jesus was in this moment. He pulled them to the side. He said, I need y'all to love each other like I have loved you. He says this because not only are we to be imitators, we shared before, love is our identifier. Somebody shout, love is my identifier. Love is my identifier. Now I'm here on a moment right now. Now we can walk this thing out a little bit because now we're not only imitators, we are now identifying ourselves. 
ourselves. See, when I identify myself as something, I take on the identity, and then I become that thing, and then I can walk in it without even thinking about it because it's just who I am. Nobody got to remind me I should treat somebody the right way uh, because when I take on that identity, I do it automatically. It becomes who I am. Jesus is really trying to change our posture in the world to say every time somebody sees you, they don't misidentify you. Oh, my God. Every time somebody encounter you, it's no, it's no mis- Oh, you just don't understand me. No, you're just putting off the wrong vibes. We love to blame everybody else. Yes, you may understand my action, but you should not misunderstand my love. Just because I got, you ever tell your kids, just, you know, I whoop you because I. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't saying that. I ain't saying that. Now, if you whoop them in the shower with a sister cord, that sounds different. That's, that feel different, though. That be make you question. You be like, I don't, I don't think you love me like that. Uh, y'all remember the day? Y'all, everybody, don't raise your hand. We have to arrest your parents. We have to go back and arrest your parents. But you see what I'm saying? Like, like, like you, 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 you don't have to be, that's what I tell you, man. In, when you're walking in love, does not mean somebody has run over you. Amen. It's a walk that establishes your identity and folks will see you coming there, know who you are. This is what John, 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 he's saying to us, is that love should be our, we should be in the elite club of edifiers. We should be edifying each other because what happens when the enemy sees us against each other, we give him a way in. You know how the enemy infiltrates the church? It's when we don't get along. I ain't saying that to me. I go there, but I don't like everybody there. Well, stay home then. So I'm learning how to love folks. That person didn't speak to you last Sunday, be the first one to walk up and say, hey, sister, how you doing? I, 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 Matter of fact, I tell, you, I tell you, love is my language. If you've been around me the last few weeks, every time I leave you, I don't care who you are, I'm going to say, I love you. I, this is my natural response now. I'm like, hey, God bless, I love you. I, I, I'm just saying it out of my mouth because I've identified with this thing. I'm taking it a little bit further. I agape you. Loving you without condition. Loving you without a why or a reason. And that thing has become a part of me. It's changing my attitude. Like, 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 like y'all know, oh, I don't have, we, ain't nobody have a perfect relationship? If you marry, don't you get upset with each other sometimes? Somebody say all the time. Okay, okay. <laughs> Does it happen no matter how long you've been married? It happens sometimes? How many of you ain't got to stay there a long time? Amen. I mean, I'm talking about minutes. Oh, y'all go, oh I, I'm talking about I, minutes. Like, something can happen. I go to another room. I'm like, uh-uh. Hey, babe. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Whole nother love la- level. Like, hold on, uh-uh. I don't care if she, she, I don't care if she said something I didn't like. I don't care if I didn't like it, what she, the way she said it, I don't care if it hurt my feelings. Who? You said what, baby? Jesus Christ. I told you I've been learning this thing. I, I, I ain't always been that way because I like to be mad sometimes. I like to walk around pouting and make you feel like I don't like you. Come on, somebody. Walk around, making them feel you, 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 we, we, we ready to get back together. Have a good life. Wasting moments, time, energy. Back at that thing, she, she be looking at me like, huh? What you doing? I say, it don't matter. I'm a love. I'm an exercise love. I, I, I told you I ain't just been reading this. I'm trying to walk this. Th- I'm maturing. Amen. Oh, yeah, I go see. I'm trying to mature. I ain't trying to be that dude no more. 
I ain't ever, I think I ain't ever going back to be him. I ain't hearing nothing I'm saying today. Like, seriously, like, you know, man, for a day, you know, it's hey, hey, still cordial. See, God don't want you to be cordial. That's a word of the enemy. He wants you to be confirming in your love. He said, love me, because what happened, see, if God loved you that way, and he decided when you got, when he, you made him upset today, he decided to do this all night. You probably still be in your bed right now. Matter of fact, your bed would probably be your tomb. If he wait for you to get yourself together, he said, oh, you know what? That mistake they made today, I just ain't gonna wake them up this tomorrow morning. He don't love like that. He continues, he says, great in my faithfulness. My mercies are new, how often? Every morning. I thought I can get through this today. I got about 50 more scriptures, really. That's the media team. I got a whole bunch of them. Because this is name in my spirit, y'all. Like, now I'm, I'm always a pretty nice guy. For the most part. Right, baby? You say that? Take a hair. Take a hair. <laughs> pretty even, tipper, you know. But, you know, I, like, I used to like to pout. I, I got I got, I got upset yesterday with my baby girl. I was mad. But when I got home, I said, oh, I ain't stand that way. I saw I like nothing ever happened. What right in there? Give me a kiss. She looking at me like, what's going on? I said, you know what? I, 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 I've learned to love. Yeah, I can make you suffer for what you did. I'm, yeah, I'm, the, big, I'm the big guy. I'm in charge. Of what, though? Have I took charge of my behavior? Have I took charge of my actions? Or am I just in charge of you? See, love will change your mind, y'all. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Am I, anybody? Because he says this in a statement so he can identify us separately from the world. Y'all see how that separates us? Y'all see how that puts us in a category of our own as believers? You had to own this position in your life. Own that thing. And I'm going to talk to you. I, I, I know the media team have flashed me four times with zeros. I mean, I got four zeros up there now. But I want to share with y'all, honestly, this John 13, I went back and I got into this thing. I sat there and I said, God, first of all, how does Jesus love? So when Jesus told us to love like he loves, it's just in scripture. Then I had to go back and say, well, how does he love then? He loves unconditionally. Somebody shout unconditionally. Oh, he loves sacrificially. Somebody shout sacrificially. And he also loves eternally. Somebody shout eternally. Let me everlasting love. Love that lasts past your past. He loves unconditionally. Romans 5, verse number 8. I'm going to read it. We're going to, and we'll dissect this next week. Y'all okay with that? But can I at least give you something to chew on? Uh, and so you can just go on and get this, this little extra, this some um, whipped cream on your pie. Unconditionally, Romans chapter eight, verse, chapter five, verse eight. It says, "But God demonstrated His own love." This is how He loved. So, so when I'm telling you in the text, when God, Jesus Christ, is saying, "Love like I've loved," let me show you how He loved. So, when you can have an identifying thing to go reference when you're giving out your love. In five and eight, he says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. He didn't wait for us to get right to make it right. Christ died for us. Amen to that, somebody. Somebody say he, he loved sacrificially. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21, he says it like this. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He took on something that was taking us straight to hell 
and became it for us. He sacrificed. Love is self-sacrifice. Some of y'all waiting to feel your goosebumps before you love properly. Or if I can feel something come up on my arm or I get butterfly. But God said, I'm a sacrificial lover. I'm going to give you love before you get right. So that you'll see what righteousness looks like. Somebody shout, he loves eternally. In Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, let me read this. It says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from what? The love of God, which is who and who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't care what you do. You can't separate yourself from the love of God. Why somebody can do something to you and you stop loving them? So God, the Bible told me in John 13 to love as Christ loved. He loved unconditionally, he loved very sacrificially, and he loved eternally. That's how he loved. And then when we accept this, we'll be able to love like that. And that all is imparted in us by way of Holy Spirit. So when we make him Lord and Savior, that thing that we have received from him become a part of us. Now we're able to exemplify or express that love. Because by obeying the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of every believer and through the Word of God, we are able now to love like God. Somebody shout like God. Can I give you one more before I go? So I got to come back here next week. To teach this, amen, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Jesus Christ, this love thing is serious, somebody shout, it's serious, it's serious. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20, he says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is, what, in you, who have, whom you have received from God, you are not your own. This is ownership. He says, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So he's saying that the same price God paid for you, what was that price? His love. He says, now with the same bodies that no longer belong to you, I need you to honor God with your movement. And that's what he's saying, that now your body should be walking in love. Why is this so important, y'all? Because we don't naturally act that way. We have to have something on the inside that convicts us or calls us because when we recognize what is in us, we begin to walk that way. Can I leave you with one more and I'm going to finish this thing off for real. I done did like a Baptist preacher. I done closed at least four times already. And so in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16. Y'all, can y'all tell I did my homework on love? Because I'm trying to get right, y'all. I'm try- if any for you, I'm going to get my, I'm going to be better. I'm going to love those that hate on me. I haven't learned how to, I'm learning all that stuff. See, when you start walking in it, you start walking in it because you recognize. Look what Galatians 5, 16 said. He says, so I say, somebody shout, he said it. He says, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Because you may want to slap somebody. Fleshly. Put flesh to flesh, you know. He says, but when you understand, see, see, when I understood, hopefully I can make contact. I told you I could connect that. John 13, 1 John tells us um, that we ought to be this way. Then we go to that other scripture where it talks about where we walk in this thing, what, what understand this love, all the things that Christ did for us. So we now know how Christ loved. Now we know that the same love that we saw he demonstrated for us by dying for us, we that don't own our own bodies anymore must love like that. And when we understand and recognize it, we now walk in it. And when we begin to walk in the ways of God, we will not respond in the flesh. Oh, my God. Amen to that, somebody. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Get up out of here today.